G'day guys and welcome back to another video with Eno here from Fantasy Take TV. So I'll be going through the round three review. Another crazy week with Supercoach. I feel like the first three weeks have been pretty nuts with all the stuff that's gone on, laid outs, injuries, carnage, all, all the sorts. We'll go go through that in a second. Um, had a good week myself. Bounced back from last week, which is a bit average. I think I dropped maybe, what was I? So I was... I think I dropped out to like 20,000 maybe or 18, yeah, 18,000 or something and, and managed to sort of claw, claw all those ranks back that I lost after round one. So it's sort of been up and down, you know, good week one, bad week two, good week three, but it's pretty early. It's too hard to sort of say, um, you know, with how teams are looking, people obviously trying to find um, some gems and get rid of like their bad picks, of course, which I've done that uh, done that probably a few times, made some, made some decent trades, but eight out of eight league wins. Um, which is a fair indication. I'm in some um, a fair few leagues with some with some good coaches. So obviously, top one percent, two thousand three hundred and eight is obviously a good week. So um, I'll take that. Unfortunately, I've lost every game in draft so far. I lost a buddy Scotty by uh, thirty or forty points. Congrats to the big man as well. Actually, just got engaged on on the weekend. So uh, shout out to Ben. But um, yeah, I think I beat him in in the classic league though. So I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, I've used. Up until this point, um, four trades. So we we'll start with thirty-six, right? Uh, I'll go through them in a sec. But um, yeah, so happy with the week, but uh, still pretty early, and um, a few more decisions to be made in the in the coming weeks. So I'll quickly go to that history first. Um, and yeah, so what was I? You know, basically twenty-one hundred both weeks. Week one that was good. Week two that wasn't anywhere near as good. But then obviously this week with the twenty-three hundred was uh, yeah two thousand or so for the round trades i think you can just see that there uh round two so chesser i mean knowing that i was probably going to boost and use three trades in round three no matter what i didn't want to force one of them to be chandler who to me after watching him play in round one i just i didn't see how this guy was getting dropped he's been on the cusp for a long time been sub like basically all of last year but been on the list for a while dominated the vfl got his chance and he just took it with both hands and there was injuries to salem uh hibbard wasn't you know wasn't favored in the team uh, and there was guys like mcvee and, and laurie back in round one that were also in the team and i just thought he was the most uh impressive of the lot obviously cozy going out made it a bit murky but then also gorn got injured as well on thursday um last week so obviously i'd already traded chandler in by then but it just really opened up for him and i just don't see a way of him getting dropped now obviously after three games, he's, he's really, really impressed. So I got that out the way, saw Chester and just knew that he wasn't going to be it for us. And uh, look, he made money this week, but there was a chance he wasn't going to. So um, yeah, I was happy to do that trade and just get one out the way for, for round three in which I boosted, obviously had to get rid of Bruin, which I pretty much knew of in round one, even though I gave him another game. McRae had a good an okay score in round one and roll, but round two that absolutely shifted and just was horrible playing a lot forward. I was at that game in round two and then it, it pretty much happened again on the weekend, uh, but he scored well in it. So, I mean, he had, I think the second quarter, a lot of, a lot of mid time, but that was it outside of the other, the other three. So, you know, Trelaw's getting more than him. Um, there's still uh, Daniel in there getting, so it just, he's out of favor. Um, I mean, he could get back into favor, but you know, he may even become forward eligible. And then Doc was just the one sort of primo that was just had the worst score in the most recent time. Like Sicily and, and Dawson, who I've got, I think I know, are pretty safe for top six. Doc maybe was the one I was worried about the most and just allowed me to unlock my team. And I'll, I'll get to more what my choices were because there was obviously another must-have or that people, many people were trading in um, that, that I did avoid. But getting in day cost was just a no-brainer. So basically Doc did a day, day cost for 100 k um, McCray up to Oliver for about 60 and then Clary just became my captain and then Bruin to Setterfield and the, the decision was Setterfield or, or Zeeble and just the way my team sort of set up I I don't fully trust Zeeble being a keeper himself I know there's a possibility but um, I don't see him really going 100 plus and I think that's kind of what you're going to need in either, in either line defense or forward um, to be top six so he may go in, in the 90s and be a, a decent enough pick for, for a period of time but I opted for, for Setterfield with his role just to I think he can make a bit more money you know he's still probably got 100 or 150k in him from this price so I opted for that uh, obviously Setterfield had you know a bit of a down game but um, yeah, I, I sort of saw both of them as being not going to be in my side for, for the long haul. So I went with the guy with the better role that has maybe a chance of some higher scores. And 
you know, Setterfield is averaging 110 till now. He can actually probably do 105 um, and be a bit of a keeper, but I still envisage him leaving my side. So that was my call. Dacos, obviously, big must-have. Don't really need to speak on him. Uh, obviously didn't have, you know, if I traded McCray to, to Dacos in, in, in round two, you know, which other people did from a Stewart or a Kelly, then I would have been able to maybe also get Zebel in round three, but that was the trade-off and, and risk I had to take. And I'm happy with fielding a guy like Chandler at F6-2, knowing that um, his role's great, everything he does, every time he touches the ball, it's really good. So just that was my reasoning for the trades I've done so far. They've all been pretty good, um, but there's still a few picks in my team that, that from starting team weren't great. Obviously, Bruin and McRae are gone now. Um, and then there's a few others that are still floating around in my team that we'll get to. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd just explain that. Uh, another thing before I get into my team, the LDU debacle, I mean, you just couldn't be any more unlucky. Um, coming from, you know, I played FPL quite a bit for the last three or four years, uh, somewhat seriously. It's happened a couple of times there before deadline. Like, uh, it's not rolling lockout in FPL, but there has been before they the deadline for the first game, which is about an hour and a half, there's been, um, you know, crashes and whatnot, maybe a half an hour or an hour, but even before the deadline. So, you know, people tend to wait for news and stuff doing it. And then the websites have crashed and you haven't been able to make your transfers. And um, everyone's sort of in the same boat for that one, I feel. Whereas this LDU one is a bit different where the 20,000 or so who traded him in weren't able to reverse that. Uh, before the game not to mention it happened really late like there's people out there who did trade in an LDU but just don't check their phones or were looking at a North Hawthorne matchup um, at 1.40 on a, on a Saturday or whatever it was to see if anyone's laid out so you know it's a hard one because there are people that are there and ready to, to make that change whereas there's people that uh, that wouldn't have been and, and would have been um, you know misfortuned anyway so it's, it's a tough one so it's probably another um leg up for the the people that want to go back to just the initial initial lockout but it's really hard like i think having a reverse option and all that is there for a reason but obviously the crash and whatnot not being able to use it is just really unfortunate so um hopefully a few people got baker if they weren't already getting him from hopper otherwise probably maybe would have got an alwyn davy or someone like that as a backup and obviously there's 60 points or so lost of what LDU possibly could have done but I think Clarko has been a bit sneaky there. I don't think he was ever really going to play, but obviously with the Finn McGuinness tag and all that talk, um, he maybe got into, you know, go right down to the wire just to keep um, Sammy Mitchell guessing. But uh, that's just a theory. Who knows what, what really went down? But I think he should be back this week, hopefully anyway. So um, that's unfortunate. It was someone I was looking at getting, but um, I did opt for, for the man Clary himself because after Bonds VC, it really just just stamped the authority on my team that I don't really have a true captain option, 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 uh, a true captaincy option that I can trust. And look, Shrek did go 130 and he was probably going to be the guy and that would have been fine. I know a lot of people did end up going with him, but for the future and the next month or so, just looking around, um, Clarice fixtures, I just, I had to do it. And it, it does hurt me that I did actually have him over McRae in my initial team and then didn't have Radigalia or, or maybe it was even Goda who were, you know, up at your high uh, hundred thousands and just to a normal rookie like a you know if I did Clary and then a Noah Long for instance over go to then um, you know I wouldn't have wasted two trades doing that but I just saw it as an opportunity to grab Clary obviously didn't expect him to go massive this week but he did say he hates the Swans and he has have some big scores against him in the past you know um, their recruiter told him he was he was a fat fat little kid when he was uh, getting drafted so he, he doesn't like the Swans and uh, he proved that again on the weekend but right We'll get to the team. I've probably spoken too long already, but Sicily really good. Unfortunately, not going bigger than than he could be with his with his ratios. But um, he's getting a lot of uncontested ball, kicking it sideways and backwards a lot. So, um, you know, you can't be upset about that. But but there's a few clangers there. He always seems to get an early clanger or two of holding the ball or stupid free kick against early in the first quarter that uh, sort of sets him back. But really happy with the pick and think there's a big big game not too far in the corner for Sicily. Dawson actually moved up the ground this week, supposedly spoke to uh, Nixie during the week and said, get me up the ground, mate, in the showdown. I want to uh, um, set the boys up from from a high position on the field, play a bit of midfield, gave Laird a hand who, you know, he always, he's been needing one the last couple of years and um, played really well. Only had the 18 touches, but they're all pretty much effective inside 50s, goal assist, score, score assist, that sort of thing, and obviously kicked the goal himself, which was pretty fortunate, but um, also missed a dolly as well that he probably should have kicked, so... Happy with Dawson. Doesn't really matter where he plays as long as it's not predominantly forward and he'll score. Um, Dacos, we just we've just seen it over the last two weeks and really his whole career how just a much of a piggy is for the for the footy. I know Dr uploaded a little YouTube shorts of um, him 
winning a free kick that wasn't even his that, that Nathan Murphy um, um, got. But uh, I think they all know just to, well, whether they know or they just have already given up and gone, yeah, okay, Nick, you can have the footy, mate. I know how badly you want it. Uh, that's just what it's going to be. So um, he's going to be great for us for the rest of the season. Jinby is just going to be an amazing rookie leading the league in tackles. Um, doesn't, you know, rack up a heap of it, but every time he does, he seems to use it well, whether it's, you know, in the contest with, with some handballs or, or his, his left boot looks pretty good. So he's going to be a great player that, that West Coast have picked up there. And uh, funnily enough, I saw that, um, you know, did uh, did Gold Coast know, because they obviously traded Jack Bowes uh, along with um, – Along with pick seven, uh, that the Jimby was on the board still at pick seven, and they could have they could have well taken him. But um, you know, I think he's a West Australian, so he'll be happy there at West Coast. McKenna, his worst game, you know, a bit down there, and, and Wilmot managed to overtake him in the last quarter when he uh, got to play down back for a bit when Rayner got swung forward. So um, look, Rich will be back next week. I'm going to have to field in this team, Wilmot or Cowan, um, for the foreseeable future for a few more weeks um, until till DPP for, for Poppy Sheasel. So, um, yeah, I'm happy doing that. McKenna will bounce back at some point. And, and, and Wilmot's got some good scores in him. Just if he's playing wing a bit more, it's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, and then Cowan mustered a, mustered a decent score. So just hopefully he keeps playing because um, obviously with Constable, the, the bench is already starting to be a bit thin. I know some people might still have Chesser, but yeah. Not too great. I mean, at least we can sort of loop him, hopefully, if, if Constable's not named anywhere near the emergencies um, for the next few weeks. So I've looked at that. The, the, they can be looped pretty much every week for the next three, I think. So, yeah, hopefully Constable stays away from the team and, and um, we can do that. Clary, as I said, um, just really got scared. I, I didn't actually see what I could do is go McCray up to Clary with the, the cash exactly um, until maybe later, in really late in the week. And I, I thought why the hell aren't I just doing this? Like I've got the chance now to correct a mistake that I did with my starting team. Like I actually had Clary at M1 and changed it with a day or two to go. Just went down to McRae, you know, didn't want to start a 700K player uh, and sort of short up the bench with some with some more expensive rookies. And I just accepted that that was a mistake straight away. Uh, and I just went for it. And the captaincy option obviously worked straight away with the 156. Bond a bit disappointing, really really good in the first half, just turned it over a lot and continued to do that in the second. So he just really couldn't in, uh, increase his score from there. Tommy Green's been okay without being great. Obviously a decent, a very good week one, but then a couple of uh, okay performances um, sort of along with, with GWS there. So um, yeah, I mean, I think he'll be in our team for a while, whether or not it's all the way down to the end of the season, I'm not too sure, but um, you know, he did all right against a, a Carl midfield is usually pretty, pretty, um, pretty dominant and hard to score against. Setterfield probably is was up against the team that is the hardest to score against at the moment, and that's St Kilda, who are just playing really defensive roster boss footy, and it's working well. I was at the game and and barely noticed him, you know, up until half time. Uh, I think he mustered a few uh, kicks and marks towards the end of the uh, the first half, and then he got a bit of ball in the second that obviously wasn't worth too much, but he did okay in the end and, and got an eighty for us. I think there's some bigger scores out for out there for him in, in future weeks as well. Um, Warpool's a disappointing one, so probably the biggest uh, wart in my team now after after the 45 that's really stunted his cash gen. Like if if we look now, his break even's 50, so it's still achievable this week, and and he will get another week in my team. But it just doesn't really help that that's going to be any cycle for two weeks. You know, next week if he doesn't score well, um, it's going to shoot up to a 90 odd. So um, then he'll probably be a priority trade out if, the, if if it continues with all these midfielders like Will Day and Connor Nash getting a lot of mid time we're probably going to have to to part way so I'll give him one more week if you want to go early and and if it's going to help you do other moves we'll probably speak about that on the podcast with with JD tonight so for now he's going to get another week in my team I mean against Geelong that's probably a pretty good match up at the moment so um we'll give him one more Hopper will be back obviously probably a lot of people got Baker with with the emergency score of 95 uh uh, on Thursday, which is really good. And obviously, <laughs> you can't ask for much more covering Hopper. Um, Ashcroft, really good. Just looking like 80s most weeks with a big score here and there. Um, you know, Collingwood this week, that'll be tough. They've actually been very restrictive as well. So see how he goes. And McKenzie, who actually played a bit more forward, just got a lot of tackles and used it well when he got his chance. So happy with the midfield. Go to 46. 
he'll probably be in my trade plans this week and I'll get to that in a bit. Um, just hasn't quite kicked on. He still could have a decent score in him at some point, but I probably won't be around to find out. And Alwyn Davey actually is scoring better than I thought he would as a sort of Essendon small forward. So um, good stuff from him, using it well as uh, you know when he gets his opportunities as well. Shrek, he came back with a bang, the big fella. So it was really hard to trade him out with this BJ Williams matchup this week and um, obviously proved dividends. But the Shrek of old, just the, the, the big man we know, 90 at halftime and can only muster a 130 out of that game is just is just what epitomizes the big man. And it just really is hard to watch at times. Frio, you know, not totally possessing the ball. Brayshaw, a lot of fumbles. Even Sarong himself, who, who obviously won the medal on the day, was really good. But just so many fumbles. And, uh, you know, I think he had a 17 or 18 hitouts to advantage. It, it honestly could have been, or it should have been 30. But, um, you know, we obviously got a decent score from him. He still dropped some money as, as he, you know, was expected with 180 break even. Um, and then he gets robbed this week with 135 break even. And, um, yeah, some decisions to be made whether or not he's someone we want to hold long term. There's Wits coming up who we really struggled against last year um, at Metricon. Uh, this year it's in the Gather Round, so it's at Norwood Oval, and I don't even know where the hell that is. So um, something to think about. And then English, who he also struggled against and only scored 59 um, that week as well. So um, we'll talk about him in a bit, but... Is it the last time the big fella's in my team? I don't know. I don't know. Rowan actually really disappointing, but Draper has sort of been restrictive for a bit, um, and he just didn't – I think all his kicks were pretty much ineffective, so that, that stopped him from tonning up. I think he still did in fantasy, so not worried about Rowan as much as other people might be, which this week isn't great, but after that it really opens up. I think it's Collingwood without any Ruckman pretty much fit on the list, so um, happy to keep on to, uh, keep holding on to Marshall, and he'll be a keeper for us. Radigalia is probably someone that look. Obviously, starting big Shrek, you want to want to some cover, and Radigalia is the one there. Um, I wish Samson Ryan played Samson Ryan played round one because it would have been him, and just for a lot less money that I could have spent uh, spread around the team, maybe it could have kept me Clary. But that's um, neither here nor there. So he's someone that probably will exit the team at some point. I think his break even is already thirty or something. So look, he's not urgent trade out, but if if you want to trade him out, I think you can absolutely do that. And the forward line was good. Dunks doesn't really need to be spoken about. Rosie was really, really good. Uh, probably would have won the medal if, if Port got across the line. Tirano is Tirano. I don't really know what else needs to be said about him besides keep getting the 40, 30 times a game, mate, and sending him uh, into orbit. And then Goulden was, um, you know, decent in a struggling Swans team that sort of got overrun in the end. I think he had a big second quarter that got most of his points for the day. Um, but he was still in a similar role that, that we want uh, and doing some good things with some tackle pressure. I think he won two or three holding the ball. So um, did really well there to, to get his score up in what was a pretty average day for Sydney. Fiesel was just the truth. Ridiculous, ridiculous start to his career. Um, obviously across half back, but he's doing more than just your cheap stuff like a Nick Dacos. He's winning inside, out, going hard, tackling, doing the lot and, and just really doing – Amazing work for North, and in your third game, that's re- that's remarkable. So um, he's F one right now. I think when you check it, it's, it's just crazy, and he's going to be uh, in our teams hopefully all year. You know, we'll see what happens. He might get put out of you know into a different position at some point. I probably would expect that. So hopefully that's not uh, not too far away. Or sorry, hopefully that is far away. Maybe post buy or something. But we'll see. And then Chandler spoke about him uh, at the start, just looking really good. Like, I think he only had it nine times and did, what, 10 points per touch is something just ridiculous. Obviously, kicked the three goals, which helps, but with their fixture opening up, as we said with Clary, um, it could really get uh, really get good for him and he could make some big, big money. I think there's still possibly like 250 to 200K in him if he can keep it up. Um, and then Fergus, just a bit, you know, Bit tough. I mean, he kicked a few goals for us this week. He scored similarly last week without kicking any. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But it's just going to be a slow burn and not an urgent trade out. Just just hopefully a big score at some point. Pardon me for uh, for him. And then Madden will probably go back to R3 when, when Radigalia leaves the side. So, be good to have Noah Long. He's been a good sneaky rookie. Um, Ollie Hollands has been okay as well. And then there's uh, Max Michelani in defense who's been good as well. Bit of a... Uh, point of difference those rookies there so um i'll speak further on some things with jd tonight on the podcast i think george is um a bit sick so he's not gonna not gonna jump on and i think he needs a bit of a rest as well 
um, with the Supercoach for a bit, so he'll probably be back next week. But um, we'll go further into detail, some other players and whatnot on that. But um, I've been holding off. What have I spoken for 20 minutes? And I, It's really hard to uh, admit that I think I'm trading the Shrek this week. I don't... It hurts to say. It's hard to say. Um, you know, obviously a big, big fan of the man uh, for quite some time. Uh, very jealous of people. There was only a couple of percent in 2021 that got to to ride that wave um, of some monster, monster scores. And I just really wanted a part of that in 2022. And, it, you know, it didn't really come to fruition as well. Like there was some big scores, but there was some sub outs. There was some obviously laid out round one. He got working into the season a bit eventually, uh, but then sort of tailed off again towards the later year. Obviously, this year Luke Jackson in has caused a bit of an up, you know, an upset there, a bit of a stir over in the West. JL doesn't seem to, um, you know, know what's going on or know what to do. Obviously, the ruck contest and, and ruck split was a bit up this week again, back from what it was last week. But I just simply can't trust him. Um, I know they won on the weekend. But that honestly should have been a 170, 180 from, from Shrek against BJ Williams. You don't get that every week, although seems like Wits does. But um, you got to turn those into big scores. And usually he does. It just His score could not have rollercoasted or bounced more times than it did in the second half on the weekend. You know, everything he... After he, every good thing he did, he just turned to shit in the next next possession. And um, I am really am sick of watching Freo and having just one of those purple coloured te- uh, players in my team and... Unfortunately, that falls to Shrek. Um, and look, to be honest, he's probably still going to be okay against Rob this week, who we dominated in preseason. But as I said, he has wits in English, who he hasn't really gone too well against recently. And Tim English is just ridiculous. Like, I'm sorry, I can't watch the pinhead without owning him any longer. Like, it just does my head in. He's coming up to the freaking kick out getting a short 45 from like Crozier or Bailey Dale, whoever it is, and they're actually kicking it to him. And then he kick, he's kicking it long down the line, getting those free points. And then when they do, he, he's pushing back up and getting the short sideways kick to kick it long again. Like it's just so hard to watch. He's just a cheat code in this game. And um, yes, there's the injury worry. That's pretty much it. Like that, yes, that's it. Like obviously January had a bit of a, a ductor and then I think he sat out a match practice with maybe a, t- you know, it's, Small strain in his hamstring. I don't even know what if it really was one or it was just a rest, but he's gone 130 three weeks in a row, and I just, I don't know. I can't simply watch it any longer. He's got to put 20, 25 points on Shrek's head every week, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. Like, Shrek, to me, with his ups and downs, and Freo had the looking, he's 105 to 110, and English genuinely can do 130, and I don't think that's stupid to say. He can do that. Um, he hasn't even really kicked goals yet. He hasn't... Um, He's going to have a 30-touch game at some point. He takes contested marks all over the ground. He, I, I can't do it anymore. I think he just has to come in simply, and if there's a way to do it, I'm going to do it, uh, and there is. Now, that is through Josh Goda. Now, the problem here was who is going to come in rookie-wise. Do you go early on a Van Ruyen? Well, no, because that means I have to send a midfielder a forward to the midfield and field someone like a Fergus Green or Van Ruyen who's coming in, and that, to me, isn't optimal. Will Phillips, I'm short of him, but to be honest, I don't think his job security is great anyway. Noah Long, obviously out of reach. Harry Rousen is my guy. Now, I'll quickly bring up the um, CBAs, if I could type it properly, uh, CBAs. Um, and he has been getting pretty much the fourth mid-CBAs for, for GWS. As soon as well, Perryman went out three minutes into round one, into the season, that got Callum Ward sort of some mid-time for, for, for two or so weeks, um, two or three weeks. Uh, and then he sort of kept on to it with Kelly still out or, or out for a week with a concussion, whilst Rousson has had 60 pretty much across the two weeks that he's played. Now, his time on ground is also in the 60s, which isn't great, but it just means every time he's on the field, he's basically playing midfield. So um, – that to me seems like someone who has a possibility to to keep going, and, and Perryman is listed at four to six weeks with a pretty bad hamstring. So, look, I'm not totally certain on his j- job security. It does allow me, obviously, to do this trade and get English in, and I'll be down to thirty. Um, and and then you know, obviously, not using another boost is fine. Still got the four boosts. Have English is another sort of VC captaincy option, which helps as well. You know, him and Clary are the hottest players in the game right now. 
should be out of VC and see them most weeks. Uh, and then I can obviously just use Madden or whatever where, where I see fit. Um, and yeah, you know, Radaglia probably to Van Royen next week if he looks good and, and holds his spot. And then sort of just sit on the team for a few more weeks there. Obviously, we have to be looping or fielding Wilmot and Cowan every week. I don't totally hate that, but that's obviously the weakest point in the team. And then Warple will have to have some monitoring um, with the role this week and, and what happens in the Hawthorne midfield. So, look, big video, long video. That does hurt to say and, 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 and to actually put in action in trading the Shrek out of my team especially after a 130 and i know a lot of you're going to call me crazy um there's a lot of captains out there and i'm happy for all you that got the big 130 um you're a braver or you are braver men and women than i but i just don't like the look of freo and, and nothing really changed for me on the weekend um you know i think he had the first cba of the game and then the second one he's already at full forward and i know the ruck contest overall we're, we're back to sort of 70 30 which is fine but I just really don't know, and I can't. Tr- I just can't trust JL. At the end of the day, I cannot trust Justin Longmuir long term. Now is pretty much the last time to get English before he's going. You know, up and up and up. He's break even still in the seventies. Another, you know, one twenty, one thirty this week, and he's just going to be completely out of reach at six fifty. And you're not going to get him in at that price. While Shrek, you know, say he puts in a pretty poor performance against Rob, um, he's gone backwards again, and 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 the gap is just too big. So. Um, I think that's what I've got to do. Obviously, I've got to get... I mean, go to a fi- fine trade-out anyway. Could be all right. Could make some more money if he gets a decent score at some point, but I'm not going to be here to find out. And Rouse and I actually like as an option the more I looked into it. He does some good things. Um, doesn't touch the ball a lot, but he's getting the role there. So there's a big game around the corner and also have, uh, what, Essendon this week and Hawthorne the next. So it's actually not too bad. A couple of fixtures there and hopefully there's a, you know, a, a decent game with maybe an 80 or so at, in one of those two to kickstart a bit of cash gen. So that's my thinking. Sit on the team for a while after that. Deal with Warple and then probably Van Rooy and, um, in for Radigalia next week. And um, yeah, hopefully Hopper's back and all is fine there. Setterfield makes a bit more money. Uh, and then probably the biggest worry is just not owning Jack Zebel, I guess, and hoping that um, he doesn't go too nuts uh, this week. I mean, Griffin Lowe's got a one-week suspension. He's challenging that and... Um, you know, if he's out, they're really going to be struggling for tools down back and against Carlton on Good Friday with, with Mackay and Kerno. So maybe that limits him a bit this week. Uh, and it's just someone I'm happy to sort of defade and, and bet against. Um, and if, if he looks really good like a keeper, I'll, you know, at worst comes to worst, I'll have to pick him up for 500, 450, somewhere in that range, you know, later down the track. But, you know, 32 years old, bit of injury history. I know the role doesn't necessarily uh, regards to sort of your soft tissue type of stuff but he's still a contact player and, and in a role like that for an old older guy that can that can hit you you know we've seen it with <laughs> pretty much half a west coast list on the weekend so um look long video today a bit to explain we'll get to it further on the podcast tonight as i've been saying but um yeah don't come at me too hard i think i'm pretty set on these trades uh and getting rid of shrek i just i just really don't like the, the look of freo at the moment um Despite their win on the weekend, I uh, I just cannot trust the coach and and the role long term. And Shrek himself, I just think isn't um, isn't capitalising, or you know them as a midfield group aren't capitalising as much as they can be on, on his work. And um, that really should have been a one eighty on the weekend. And the fact that it wasn't even close um, does scare me a bit for the harder matchups, which as I said, he has coming up soon. So I'm going to take the opportunity now to trade to English. Fully prepared for the hurt and pain that he's going to give me like he did last year. Um, but as long as he doesn't play Braden Proust anytime soon, maybe he won't get knocked out. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, that's my play at the moment. He's very highly owned as well now with, you know, I am in the top 5,000. I think he's 60% or 70% owned. It's going to be more probably this week um, in that range. And, and with Shrek probably being down at 5 or 10%, that's not something I really want to bet against because Wits is obviously the other one that's going quite well. Uh, himself so I'd happy to get English in this week um, yeah it hurts I've still got the mask there hanging up in the corner and that's not going anywhere uh, I did say I'd throw it out the window if, if he shut the bed this week and he didn't so um, always got love and respect for the Shrek man and, and I, I saw there's some Shrek rave going on somewhere in St Kilda this uh, in a few weeks or something so look I won't be there but but maybe any big Shrek fans get down and, and get involved but um, yeah thanks for watching guys <laughs> I'll see you on the podcast in uh, the next video. Cheers.
got the mojo deals, we been trippin' like the A's Pullin' out the coupe at the lot yeah.